and welcome to It's Your Time to Shine, a story about being a mom in a modern world. This is just Breetcore, and I want to start off by thanking you for your feedback and comments on our past episodes. One of the most common questions we get asked is, how can I prevent bullying and other aggressive social behavior? While we don't claim to have all the answers, here are a few ideas from our archive. But also, we want to hear from you. Tell us what works for you and your family. And as always, thanks for listening. Hello, and welcome to It's Your Time to Shine, a podcast about being a mom in a modern world. Last week, we talked a little bit about bullying and how bullying can affect your children. So this time, we thought it would be helpful to talk about some tips and tools or maybe some techniques in terms of how to address bullying at home. So first, I should welcome and say hello to you, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hey, Jess. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Great. What are your thoughts? Do you have some thoughts about bullying and what we can do to make some differences in our child's life? Yeah, I think that, I mean, I know for me, spending time with your children, like quality time and wanting to spend time. So I love cuddling with Alyssa. I think like these are the moments that actually count, you know, just like being there, being present with your child. I'm not saying like that's the solution, but I think parents making a genuine effort to be with their kid makes a difference, like validating the child. And it, I think, is huge for a kid to know that they truly want to be with me. Because if your parents don't even want to be with you, then what are they supposed to think about the rest of the world? Yeah, so that that self, it like leads to self-confidence and and just knowing that exactly love exactly loving. And when I say that, I also am not saying that, oh, quit your job, be with your kids. I'm just saying that kids know from their perspective when parents are making a genuine effort. So if you have the child who has a mom who's working three part-time jobs, she's single, but she's making every effort outside of that, the child knows that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the part that I'm measuring. I'm not measuring all time spent, you know? Right. So it's just quali- the time, the effort that you're truly making to spend with your child. Yeah, part of what you're saying, it's it goes back to like worthiness. And if we think we're worthy of someone's attention or love or and it ties back to confidence, but it also ties back to how they interact with others and whether they are going to be like a doormat in their circle of friends right. or if they're going to be a leader right. in their circle of friends or if they're just going to be. Right. You know, you don't have to. You, there's a bunch of positions you can be. That's not doormat and that's not leader, like in the middle, right? No, you're right. It, and and actually, I try. I actually try to like when I deal with Ali, try to at least it doesn't always happen. But when I deal with her, I try to be like, what would I want her to do? Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Right. So if I'm feeling insecure because she's more about daddy one day, right? Obviously, my instinct is to be like, oh, what's going on? Oh, why do I feel this way? And blah blah. And then I'm like, what would I want her to do if she felt insecure about a friend? I would want her to be like, it's okay. I know where I know my worth. I know my friend still loves me. And if not, then that's on her. I would want her to have that attitude, that self-confidence. So I try to do that um, when I in whatever context, like I said, the way I'd want her to react is the way I try to react. I didn't say react because I am not perfect. (laughs) Right. So but at least I try to react that way. And that's just one example. That's awesome. I sometimes talk to Butum about constantly correcting the kids, you know, if they make a mistake, like correcting them, which we have to correct them and we want them to have discipline and to get and improve and be better. Right. But also if we you we have to be careful not to correct them so much that they think it's okay for friends to correct them or friends to point yes. out things, you know. Right, right. So we need to have that balance of like teach them but also show them what love feels like and what love looks like and what constructive criticism looks like and how to set it up and understand those boundaries of like who can say hey this isn't good you have to fix it and who can say like oh well you did the best you could it's all good you know and how to pick those times and it's really hard everything's harder especially if you have multiple kids it's really hard to remember each child in that moment like what okay what does this child, what kind of response do they need? What's their confidence level on this particular skill? What habits are they forming? Like you have to keep like a little database of what's going on with that child at that moment and what they need, right? And so yeah. you don't want it to spin out too. So that's incredibly hard and challenging for parents. That's funny. That's funny because as you say, everything you say, I suddenly remember that's exactly what um, I was thinking when I'm always telling Alyssa, no, you can't do that. No, be polite. No, no. 
or a lot. And I'm like, God, if I, I want her to understand that for discipline, but at the same time, I also let her win some mm-hmm. battles. And this happened after I realized that I'm saying no too much. Right. You know, let her win some so that there is a balance. Otherwise, my kid's going to be a doormat. Exactly. So, yeah, and you don't want to be like Yeah, that. no, but you saying that, I'm saying that's exactly what I was thinking just a few weeks ago with her. Yeah, so it's like you're constantly checking. But I think all of this, like, prevents. It may not be the solution, but all of it helps in... Like you said, in you know, we can't be there with our children the moment it happens. And if a bully's getting to them or if the someone else is like, hey, do drugs, we're not there. But what we can do is at least give them like the foundations for a good self-esteem, positive self-worth. That's right. You know, that's right. So. And we know the decisions aren't mm-hmm. going to be perfect every time, but at least we're kind of giving right. them that toolkit. Exactly. The tools. Right. And like like we were saying earlier There is a really fine line, right, between bullying and peer pressure and um, forcing, encouraging someone to do something and forcing someone to do something. And a lot of it is like how you feel, because the truth is, like you really value sleep. And let's say we, you and I were to get together, take our kids out of it for a second. Let's say you and I were to get together. We don't see each other that often. I might say to you, like, come on, Lisa, it's only nine o'clock. Let's go out. Let's go. Let's go out to this cool place and go have dinner or have drinks or hang out or something. And that feels like, it could feel like, depending on where you are on your spectrum and what's been happening with you, it could feel like, oh, wow, Jaspreet really wants to hang out with me. She's a good friend. She values our time together. But if I get too pushy or I don't understand your situation, it could feel like, wow, she's really forcing me. Like, hey, stop it. I don't want to do that. And we have to teach our kids to be in touch with their own feelings and kind of understand and respect how they feel at that moment. And that's hard. That's a really hard balance to teach a child, right? Yeah. Being in being in touch with your own feelings, I think, is like a dormant thing in this country. I think most people aren't mm-hmm. because we don't cry enough. We don't watch sad movies enough. Yeah. We don't touch each other enough. And I think those things are, I think, they're the one of the most important triggers to understanding and being more in tune with your own emotions. Oh, totally. And then if we take it even out of the American culture and think about like our Punjabi culture as well, we don't Mm -hmm. talk about Mm -hmm. our feelings very much. And especially women, women and moms are not encouraged to talk about how they really feel and what's bothering them. And we fall into the role of obligations a lot too, right? And so, um, so in America, we call it like FOMO, the fear of missing out. And on the Punjabi culture side, it's like the things that you have to do, right? Like, and so there is that, um, there is that funny balance between the two. But I love those. I love that you are evaluating now things that make her put her in a stronger position. And um, yeah, I try and I feel fortunate that I had a kid late because the things that I think about now, I wouldn't even have thought about five years ago. I wouldn't have thought about before our election. You know what I mean? Everything changes the way you um, parent, I think every situation, your personal stories, what's happening politically, everything, right? right? Totally. Yeah, absolutely. And a couple of other things that I was thinking about in terms of just being in a good situation, if you do come across a bullying type of event is, um, making time to meet with your kids' friends. Oh, okay. That's good. Yeah. And then if possible, like, You know, meeting with their parents, too, like play dates, you know, for working parents, play dates aren't always doable. But I think when you volunteer at your child's school, if you can do that for a few hours or go on a a field trip, like I mentioned, Mm -hmm. I had met this young boy um, on a field trip. And so you have that those exposures to kind of get an idea of like what kids personalities are and how your child Mm -hmm participates like yeah with no their friends. that's good yeah so I think that's really mm-hmm. helpful and then another thing a really basic one once your child is school age or even if they're going to daycare like in a classroom type of environment meet your child's teacher definitely you know a lot of insight can be gained by having a good relationship with the teacher and if you suspect that something's going on um, you can even reach out to your teacher. Most teachers are awesome about trying to watch bullying the reality right. is in public schools at least that there's just only one teacher to so many kids, and so it's hard to, for them to know what's going on. But if you give them a heads up, you can yeah. have them kind of be your eyes and ears when you're not there and just get more perspectives on what's happening. That's valuable information. Yeah. I mean, right now it is easier, right? She's in preschool, Alyssa, so it's easy for me to talk to the teacher. Ratio's 1, 10, you know, right. but it gets harder, I'm sure. As the kids get older and as you have more kids. Right. And so like in a Marie so. situation, he's in middle school, so they change 
the classes don't rotate together. Everyone has their own schedule. And then they mm. also change teachers. So he has right, a class right. of 23 or 24 for one period and then a different group of 24. Some of the kids right. might be the same. So it's harder. Yeah. But I think meeting with the teachers, at least you have that, you get a couple constants. You have your child's perspective. You have your teacher's perspective. If you start to get a good relationship with different students and their parents, then you can possibly get right. that perspective. And um, one other thing that Butum and I did a lot when the kids were younger, actually every year, mm -hmm. we would do a mm -hmm. presentation for our child's class and mainly for Amrik because kids had a lot of questions. Oh, wow. I love that. Yeah. As a sick, uh -huh. just being visibly different, wearing a thistad or a turban, right, right. having long hair, kids had a lot of questions. And um, we would do this little presentation, just like get to know what Punjabi and Sikh culture is like right. and answer questions and um, a lot of bullying can come from this concept of the other and not right, understanding right. what someone is, yeah. you know. And so that's something we all have to be aware of and be careful of yeah. because of, like you said, the political sentiment has really like played into a lot of the right, fear around right. that. But I love that. I mean, not only you're doing it to prov to help your child, but you're also helping others in celebrating diversity. Exactly. And understanding it's okay to be different and this is why and these kids mm -hmm. get more than they bargain for like they get a treat learning this because otherwise where would they have actually learned this information so you might be changing an entire a child's entire perspective or building blocks for how they view the world right and and the truth is like in middle school we didn't do this but in every year in elementary school we did this presentation so you think like okay well you're affecting like 25 kids every year right. and so those kids will go and mix into the population and right. so they have a heightened awareness right but the truth is like kids really had questions and um i remember when i was in preschool mm -hmm. not when i was in preschool sorry <laughs> when we were when the family was in preschool <laughs> and i would go to drop amrik off right there were some kids that would come up and and they would touch my dastad. Mm -hmm. And so like a dastad, it's, you know, it's made out of um, pretty soft fabric. Mm -hmm. And I wear bright colors, you know, my personality, I'm always wearing like right. really bright colors. And so kids <laughs> would come up and a couple times their parents during drop off would be like, no, 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 don't touch. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm like, you know, they're curious. Even when they're three and four, they're curious and they're drawn to like, oh, this is something different. Why does she have her hair up? And so they would ask me questions. And I would say, it's totally fine. Let them touch. Like, for me, I'm comfortable with it. I wouldn't recommend that you just see a sick on the side of the road and, like, walk up and touch their, the thought. <laughs> like, hey, what kind of fabric is this? Can I touch your belly? <laughs> it's yeah. Thing, right. But the fact that they're curious, a lot of questions right. that they have, if they remain unanswered for many years, you can see how mm -hmm. that could turn into something else right comments or well then they fill in the blanks right right yeah and i think everyone who is um a lot of immigrants feel that like with the mexico um build a wall sentiment with the anti-muslim comments right. and things like that like a lot of us just feel like okay we have to be aware we have to really yeah. know how to talk about our culture and talk about our faith if we need to right. and all right. of those different little conversations i think help to preventing that situation where a child feels like they're getting comments like lobbed at them that they can't address right. and it might become like right. a situation that escalates. Yeah, it's like you're like preventative care parenting, <laughs> you know? Right, yeah, that's a great way of looking at it. That's a great way of so looking at it. So just before it even, you know, you're doing whatever you can and you're doing the best you can. You know, what happens later, you know, you'll see the results, which we did with Amrik, by the way. Right. We saw it, we saw how he dealt with it and I thought he did awesome and I think you guys did awesome. So I think prevention and being aware of what could be is um, also what I'm just summing up what you said is also one of the keys. Absolutely. So those are a couple of things that I would recommend. Yeah. And then what we could do is um, as we start to hear feedback from some of our friends and family, we could right. maybe continue right. to share other things that work. Definitely. Definitely. I think there's a lot of valuable insights from a lot of parents. You know, I encountered something. You know how we were talking about uh, we were just talking about being in a foreign country and how it's even harder for the parent when English isn't their first language. Mm -hmm. So I went to my tailor yesterday and she just started talking to me about how frustrated and she's 32. Um, she's from Pakistan speaking to me in Urdu and she's like, I'm so frustrated 
my daughter, who's 13 years old, she holds everything in. She won't talk to anyone. She doesn't talk to us. And then she's like, we've gone to talk to her counselor. She skips school. She just watches TV all day. So I'm like, is something happening at school? Is she being bullied? And she goes, yeah, something happened with a bunch of girls. But she doesn't say anything because she holds everything in. And then she just comes home and she's just quiet. And then my tailor was saying how one thing that got me, she said that apparently Child Protective Services is coming because they're like wondering what's going on with her. And she's frustrated because she cannot explain to them that she's like, we do not hit her. We don't do anything. It's just this is what's happening. And we don't even know how to tackle this because she will not talk to us. And then so she's like, I scold her a lot and I yell at her. Maybe I shouldn't. My husband always says, you know, why don't you just do it more in a loving way? What got me was her frustration. She was like, I want to. I want to hug her. I want to kiss her. I want to say it's okay, but I don't know how to. I was never taught. I, like, got teary-eyed when I heard her. So it just, her frustration just got me. And obviously something's up in school. It it seems, I, I met this girl because she gave me parking pass last week. And she's just quiet and very reserved. But something is happening in school, and she's not able to talk to her parents, anyone, and she's just holding it in. Oh, no. And... It just it, it just made me really yeah. sad. Made me appreciate where we are and the fact that we do have a voice and we can we can talk. But I felt for this little girl. I felt for her mom who's just trying. Right. All I could do is be a listener at that time, mm-hmm. you know. But I did say definitely talk to the counselor. Continue talking. Take somebody there who speaks English. You know, my mom actually is really close to her. She talks to my mom. And I'm like, you know, just so... Someone can, you know, I might even actually, as yeah, I'm talking, help. I'm like, I should go. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I was about to say, like, we... Maybe there's something we could do. I think you going with her would be great and be right. helping her because the last thing you want CP- is CPS to be involved because they don't, the system isn't designed to have a compassionate understanding of what's happening in a family's life and a child's right. life. I hate to say that, but that's the truth. No, it's true. It scared me when I heard that. And she said, we're so frustrated. They keep coming to the house. I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And they're you probably know? wondering because of truancy, right, why the child's not coming to school. Uh, another thing maybe we could do is, like, look at our networks and see if there is another child the same age that could maybe talk to her. And she might feel more comfortable venting and just to say, you know, this is another situation. Like, being from Pakistan... That's a country yeah. that gets a lot of negative um, discussion in the right. news. And so maybe people make right. comments because of that. I and mean, we don't realize right. like no, being sure. of Indian heritage, there is a difference between India and Pakistan. We don't think of it because culturally there's so many similarities. But right, right. in the, the reality, just the name can mean something. And so maybe right. someone said, hey, no, that's are you a good from idea. Pakistan? And they gave her a hard time or something. So. Yeah, it doesn't even say. She has a younger sister who's about a year younger. And she goes, the younger sister's the opposite. She's very happy-go-lucky. I'm like, well, is she close to her sister? And she's like, no. Oh, well, maybe, you know, so maybe there's something I can talk there. to her sister. Yeah, yeah. And get them yeah, together. So. And right. Some kids at that age, too, because 13, 12, that's like the age of my of Bhavneet, you know? So I feel like. Yeah, what grade is Bhavneet She's in eighth. That's She's in eighth grade as well, this girl. And I will tell you, kids can be mean in middle school. I mean, kids can be mean. And they can be mean in middle school. And so some of the things that I might try with my child is like, how do we measure our value and our worth? So you know about that. But also, like, if someone's being mean, how do you stand up for yourself? Right. And why do people say the things they say, like trying to understand their perspective and what they know? Right. But so let's let's not um, let's talk about that a little bit more. Let's not like drop the ball on this. All right. I'm going to maybe later you can send me a text and let me know like what area she lives in. And then I'm going to check against some of the Punjabi Sikh friends that I have from Virginia and see if there's okay. kids that might be the same age. I, that yeah. would be great. And I'm going to talk to my mom because my mom knows a lot more about this. So I'm going to find out oh, because good. she just kind of told me a little bit, but she said, I always talk to your mom. So Yeah. And your right. mom being having raised two kids and then being in that area and being close would be another great person f- to go to the school right. with, with her as well because she can relate to some of the, the different Yeah, concerns, yeah, yeah. This right? is my alma mater. The schools are all there. It's right by my parents' house. Oh, so. awesome. Okay. So you have your own connections with them. All right. Well, this has been a great discussion, Lisa. I think we all need that reminder, that wake up call. Like, we need to be vigilant in what's going on in our kids' lives. It's so easy to get right. wrapped up in the day to day, but we have to be right. involved with them, really listen, ask questions to listen, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. try to surround them with opportunities to share what's happening with them in their world. And so with that, I'll thank you and thank our listeners for listening to this episode of It's Your Time to Shine. 